We've got ourselves another new Tamron Nikon Z mount lens. This is the 150 to 500 millimeter f5 to 6.7 lens. So why am I so excited about it? Find out next. Just a very quick shout out to the team at Tamron Australia for sending me out this lens to test and review. But Tamron aren't paying me to do this review, so any sort of findings or opinions I've got of this lens are mine alone. Opening the box you get all your documentation and the lens comes well packaged in thick foam. You get your front and rear lens caps and lens hood. My first impressions of this lens was it had a bit of weight to it, but felt solid, built like a tank. The zoom worked well, nice and smooth. With a short twist of my wrist, I went from 150 to 500 millimeters, no problem. Let's have a look at those specs. It's a full frame lens and weighs in at 1,875 grams. Now that's with the tripod collar on. Without it, it weighs 1,720 grams. Has an 82 millimeter filter thread, max aperture is f5 to 6.7 and minimum f22 to f32. Has a seven blade circular diaphragm and the optical construction is 25 elements in 16 groups. Minimum focusing distance is an impressive 60 centimeters at 150 millimeters and 1.8 meters at 500 millimeters. It has a USB-C port at the rear of the lens for future firmware updates and has VC built in or vibration compensation. But you will have to engage this from inside the Z-mount camera menu as there is no button on the side. And speaking of buttons, on the side you'll see this non-linear and linear button and I'll explain what that does a little later on. I found the focusing between subjects is smooth, silent and quick. So to the question, why am I so excited about this lens? Well, firstly, it's the price. It retails here in Australia for $2,199. In the US, $1,199. Now that's half the price of the popular Nikon Z 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Secondly, it has 100 millimeters more reach than that 100 to 400 millimeter. And thirdly, this is not so much to do with the lens per se, but it's the fact that we're now starting to see more third-party manufacturers like Tamron making more lenses for the Nikon Z mount. That's awesome news for Nikon Z mount camera owners because at least now you've got a choice in terms of your budget or type of lens you're chasing. Because I'll just get you guys to cast your memories back to a few years ago when the only lenses available for the Z mount were native Nikon Z lenses. But that's all changing now though, because Nikon were very smart in allowing third party manufacturers to build Z lenses for their Nikon Z mount cameras. Because at the end of the day, photographers can now see they've got a greater variety of lenses to choose from at different focal lengths and different prices. And that draws new buyers into buying Nikon Z mount cameras. Anyway, let's go down to the nature reserve with this combo. This is the 150 to 500 Tamron attached to my Nikon Z7. Now there's one bird down there at the moment that I'm going to be gunning for and it's called a Spangled Drongo. I know, what a name, right? Anyway, let's take this combo and see what it's like. Yeah, um, we might be needing this then, hey? I can't believe the detail I'm seeing in this. Kingfishers. They're out here at the moment. Let me just um, flick over into slow-mo. Hopefully this little guy doesn't fly away. him just as he flew off. I just got that little snippet of slow-mo video with him and another kingfisher flew in front and he took off after it. These are the guys I was telling you about. Right here is this spangled drongo. Got this dolphin shaped tail. They make the most weirdest noise but they're also like a mimicking type bird. They're awesome to photograph. I love how when they're in sunshine 
you get this blue speckle type look on their wings. Can you hear it? It's amazing. Listen, we'll try and capture him. I'll have to boost the audio up, but that's the type of noise they make. The thing about this olive bacteria, like the last one I shot in another video, he's more interested in checking me out. He's kind of like looking at me going, what are you doing? Oh, that's a great shot right there. Just looking off to the left. Just got this kingfisher over here. I just want to show you the difference between the vibration control on and off. Unfortunately, we weren't rolling on this camera when I just got this bird. I've, I've only seen it once here. That cute little guy was a fan-tailed cuckoo. I absolutely love the colors on this bird. Check out that gold ring around its eye. Isn't it the most beautiful thing you've seen on a bird? It was just sitting on these branches right here and it was just diving down onto the ground. I think I got a couple of shots of it. It was just eating this little type of ground grub. What a day for bird photography. What a great day to go out and try this lens. Now I swear I heard those spangled drongos again. There was two of them. And there they are. It's gonna shoot this at 500. There's two of them. There's one on top of one another and they're sitting on this branch. I'm gonna single point focus on the bottom one. The shot looked like a spangled drongo sandwich. Now, one thing I neglected to tell you guys before while I was in the studio was this lens comes with a focal length lock on it. If you just move that zoom ring forward, you'll see you get this little white ring. That is now locked at 150 millimeters. I can't move that, but that works at all focal lengths. Go around a little bit, lock, can't move. I've actually seen this on another lens that I did a review on. It's the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter G2 lens. It's for the Nikon F mount. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave it for you right here to go and check out a little bit later on. Another thing with this lens, you've also got a locking switch which locks it into 150 millimeters. That comes in handy when you're doing traveling or if you don't want any sort of lens creep. Just got a water dragon over here. I'm just gonna quickly get a shot of it in the sun. This lens is weather sealed and is also available in Sony and Fuji mounts. But when you look at the website, you'll notice the lens has different buttons for each camera manufacturer on the side. The Nikon Z mount gets this non-linear and linear button. So what does that do? Well, when you're using manual focus, it changes the response of the focus ring. Non-linear, the rotation speed of the focus ring changes the amount of focus movement. In linear, the rotation angle of the focus ring changes the amount of focus movement. In simpler terms, and let me show you this example, nonlinear is a more slower elongated focus, good for things like slow focus pull when you're shooting video. Whereas the linear is much faster. I use this when manually focusing on birds and wildlife so I can take my shot quicker. You know, since I've been using this lens, I think the thing that really impresses me the most about it is how incredibly versatile it is. You can use this for so many different types of photography and I think it's going to make an amazing travel companion for Nikon Z mount owners. 
The fact that you can get shots at 150 millimeters at 60 centimeters, that really does blow me away and I'm just amazed at the definition that you get out of this lens. So just a little summation when it comes to this Tamron 150 to 500 millimeter f5 to 6.7 lens. It lives up to its word of what Tamron says on their website. It is a compact ultra telephoto lens and you know it's got this noisy miner it just keeps coming down. In fact I want to talk about the sharpness of this lens. It's just amazing and strange that this noisy miner came down. I got this shot before unfortunately I wasn't rolling with this camera but I got this shot of this little tiny baby miner bird this little fluff ball is screaming for one of the adult miner birds to come down and feed it have a look at the sharpness of this shot now that really is impressive for a lens like this where you've got a variable aperture and for the price if you want to know more information about this lens, I've left you a link in the description box below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review. Never stop creating, and I'll see you next time.